They like us, but not that much. Yeah. But what about the Undertale dog and the? That's all I wanted to see, actually. That's why. Uh, I, that's your, why. Your I, little dog icon. Yes, I aggressively switched to this so I can admire the dog. Um. All right. So this is round fourteen, then, correct? Yep. Okay. Looks like an Eldrazi player is on a multi five, uh, and he keeps it on the play. Okay. And. I wonder what matchup this is. Yeah, what is the point? I don't. Uh, I wouldn't so mind. This is a good hand for a five, right? Assuming Chalice of the Void is good. Right. Right. Oh. 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 <laughs> this is one of those situations where you don't want to be on the play because you turn one play, you just wasted it completely, and uh, you wow. put you play the City of Traders, and that like really hampers your own development. And he actually goes ahead and plays a Chalice on zero. Right. Which. Um, Potentially. So Oh, <laughs> it actually ends up being good here because he has Mox Diamond or, or Chrome Mox. Right. So um, is this the this is the big red deck then? right? Yeah. So this is big red versus Eldrazi. So it's not the Eldrazi Mirror. Okay. Um, like we thought. And then uh, this is the player from Magic Online, Tash, who, okay, uh, yeah, who's Tash, been Tash, doing yeah. well with the deck. And so this is super interesting. The great heads up play by the Eldrazi player, by the way. Yeah. Um, yeah. The Chalice is almost a dead card, mm -hmm. but Chalice on zero does have the potential of uh, doing something. Oh wow! This is it. So this is weird though. Chalice on two, it doesn't hit too much. It hits like warping whale. I assume the caverns on Eldrazi already. Right. Um, but maybe he just doesn't have that many options. It looks like this Eldrazi player has an excellent five. Yeah. Uh, for he's sure. gonna follow with another thought knot and and potentially a. Uh, wow. Well, so the big red player is even thinking about scooping right now, and he does. He just yeah, wants to yeah. hide that information. He sees that his hand is set up to deal with. Um, you know, being at a low life total, uh, and with these two creatures, so he just goes ahead and scoops it up to preserve that information. And wow, was that a fast game? Was that even a bit? Like, come on, <laughs> bold to five, dead on turn two. I mean, that that's amazing. So yeah. right now we see the Eldrazi player just like contemplating. He just gave a solid look and was like, "What are you playing?" Uh -huh. Well, I, 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 I think I, if you've been hovering on the top tables, you might have already heard about the big red player, right? Um, but, but there's always a chance that he just thinks it's Eldrazi, because that's the most likely deck. Like, if this were round one, you would just be like, oh, he's Eldrazi. Right, right. Um, but given that it's round two, he could be on something different. Uh, I, I think it's a little bit easier. Like, like we see the Eldrazi player doing now, you do get to board out some Chalice of the Voids, mm -hmm. because you saw the opposing Chalice of the Void. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't think you, you would board that differently. It's weird. So on these Chalice and Chalice matchups, on these Stompy on Stompy matchups, it's all about you know getting ahead on board quickly. And so you want to board out all your lock pieces, and you want to board in all your threats and removal. And again, I think it's similar to the um, Merfolk versus Eldrazi matchup, where the Eldrazi deck is just has bigger, cheaper creatures, so it should be favored. Mm. Um, that being said, I think the Big Red deck has more acceleration than the Merfolk deck, so I think it's has a better fighting chance against Eldrazi right. than Merfolk now, did. You know what card's really good in this matchup? Fiery, fiery Confluence? Confluence? Okay. Fiery Confluence. Is yeah, a, you want to put that up in the chat? Yeah, Fiery Confluence is a four mana sweeper. Or a, well, just, it's not actually a sweeper in this matchup. Um, yeah. Oh, no, no, you're right, right. Sorry. It deals one damage to the creatures. Yeah. Okay, so. So it does take care of any, like, mimics, um, potentially matter reshapers, yeah, and the like. Endless ones. Yeah. Yeah. Um, also destroys artifacts. That could be relevant. Um, well, yeah. so the Eldrazi player is going to board out most of his artifacts. He's going to leave in Gta, so that would be the main target, okay. um, which would be you know a fine right. target to hit. You know, I, I'm not really familiar with Taisha's list, but I would imagine that he has some sort of you know Blood Moon esque effect in his sideboard. Oh yeah, and uh, no, he's a Blood Moon deck actually. So oh really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So uh, game one on the play, he should be pretty favored. Okay. Uh, yeah. He just needs to you know find Blood Moon or find a fast start. Like a turn one Rabble Master, I think would be you know, really really good as well. Um, I'm not sure if he's playing that. I think he is. Yeah, I'd be surprised. Um, but yeah, I, I yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm actually really excited to see this matchup. Mm -hmm. uh, I bet Jace is not, and you know I understand that man. Um, but this is uh, this deck. I don't think I've ever actually seen it on camera in play. Mm -hmm. um, had I not played against it this last week, I wouldn't have even known about it. Right. Um, well, it's weird, right? Because I just think like the archetype should just be called Red Stompy. You can build it any number of ways. You can build Dragon Stompy, Goblin Stompy, 
or like mm-hmm. whatever he has here, which is like I guess it's Dragon Stomp because he has Thunder Maw. Uh, yeah, and, the, uh, the Regent. Yeah, Thunder Break. Yeah, yeah. It's Thunder Stompy. You know it's crazy. What I did not realize is that the Regent protects all your dragons, not just itself. Yeah. Um, I tried plowing a Thunder Maw and I took three to the face and it got redirected at Jace and that was not fun. I did uh, not realize. And actually, if they have two Thunder Maws out, it stacks too. Oh, really? Yeah, so you would take six. Wow. So okay. it's not fun. <laughs> that's that's disgusting. Yeah. Red has some really Okay, looks like this is a turn one Ravel Master. Ooh, Pyrokinesis is really strong as well. Okay. I gotta think this is a keep. Uh, it is a little bit awkward because you have two lands that are both City of Traders. Mm-hmm. And you have I mean Spirit Guide. So it is somewhat awkward. So I can see like he only has one red source, the Spirit Guide. Right. And he has a bunch of double red spells. So this is tough. It's basically he's asking the question, is the turn one Rebel Master gonna be good enough? And I think he's actually gonna go with no, but we'll see. Well yeah, I also don't think it's gonna be good enough because you're playing against a deck that could potentially go turn one Eye of Ugin into two mimics and then suddenly your your uh, Rebel Master can't really tag. Yeah, they are still making yeah. one ones, but that's not good enough. Exactly, you're not one ones in the face of five fives. And, and especially when you have a card like Blood Moon in your deck, it might just be worth it. Um, mm-hmm. Now, notably though, the Eldrazi player's yeah. hand is very slow. Yeah, so I, I think we're gonna see he's debating on a mulligan or not. Right. And I think he should mulligan. Like in in modern, this was the case. You mulligan until you hit a solid line. In legacy, I gotta imagine it's even more true, right. especially with the scry rule. Right. Like. Really, the cards don't matter as much as the tempo, and we're going to see the Eldrazi player... Um, I guess he's keeping. Nope, he looks like a mulligan, right? Well, no, that's oh, that's, Tyson, shuffling? that's Tyson, oh, Okay, all right. Yeah, yeah. All right I mean, so... like, yesterday we got to see just how abusive the Soul Lands were out of this uh, Legacy Eldrazi deck in the Merfolk matchup when, mm-hmm. you know, he went turn one Mimic, turn two Thoughtseer, turn three, you know, um, what was it, Oblivion Sower? Mm-hmm. He, he could potentially have Oblivion Sower there. Um, and, and that was just like incredibly powerful. Okay, so, so. this hand has a Torn oh. Magus. Done. Much Nine. better. Much Sneep. better. Alright, and this Chandra, Chandra is you don't coming. need that because you only have two mana effectively. <laughs> and wow. now the Eldrazi pl- So the Eldrazi players not mulliganing actually worked out because he just needed lands now. Like it didn't matter if they were Saul lands or not Saul lands. Right. Um, and maybe he kept this knowing that Turn 1 Blood Moon was a possibility. True. Um, so he was just like, I have lands, you know, it's not the best hand, but it can maybe play out a game of magic if I just draw one more land. Right. So, yeah, it, it worked out for him. Yeah, and I mean, well, let's see, I, I mean, looking at the hand, I saw a Thought Knot and a Reality Smasher, and those cards... You can't help. cast them, but yeah, he does have Endless One. I don't help you cast them, yeah. Uh-huh. Okay, so it looks like he's going to cast the Endless One on two, just to hold off the Magus of the Moon, mm-hmm. buy some some more time. But on the other hand, it's but we gotta figure out all this mountain. <laughs> what are his outs to this Magus of the Moon, right? He has Dismember as an option. Oh, this is interesting. Is he actually going on the aggressive? We'll see if he has any good follow ups. Okay. Battery Ooh. Shaper. Okay. Oh. Oh, you can't cast that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, like, buddy. Uh, nope. <laughs> You make a lot of red mana, but that's all you got. This card is um, good against you for a reason. All is Mountain. So what are the outs to Magusman? Are Dismember, Ratchet Bomb, and All is Dust. Are the, and he also has Ulamog, but I don't think that's a realistic out. Right, right. Um, Do you think he's going to name Chandra Torch of Defiance? That would be the correct name, I think. It's, it's hard to say, though. There's so many things you could name. And this deck I, is just off the uh-huh. radar. I, I think the fact that he brought in the Pithing Needle means he knew the matchup. Oh, okay. Because okay. he would not bring that in in the Eldrazi Mirror. Ooh. Oh! And there is she Chandra. is! And so, it looks like he did not name Chandra. Okay. He must have named something else. So this is the new Chandra from Kaladesh, correct? Yeah. Um, it has four abilities. The first is you can exile a card. Um, if you don't cast it this turn, I believe your opponents take two damage. Um, but you otherwise okay. you could cast it, you know, uh-huh. I think for this like, turn. I think it might be just one damage. Um, oh, maybe one, yeah. Um, then yeah the, it looks like that's what he's doing. Or, no, he's... He's adding mana wow. um, to go for a fiery confluence. Uh, and is the, the the confluence so is that really... six to the face? Yeah. Or... yeah. Okay. That is that's so cool. Oh, so this this is able to uh, survive the Chandra, but also he doesn't have three toughness or three uh, loyalty. I mean, card... right, let's put the card up. Yeah, card Chandra Torsha. Nope. I oh, gotta add a combo maybe. No. Torch? I can't figure it out. Someone posted it in the chat, please. You guys are much better than I am. Um, 
But yeah, uh, so Chandra's other abilities include uh, what we saw here, the Rite of Flame, adding two red mana. And then the minus three is deal four to a creature. And the ultimate... Probably is. Show me. Um... <laughs> All right, oh, wow. Okay. And we oh, just, wow. We just murdered yeah. our opponent to death. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> and this is what you were talking about earlier. You see his face. He's so happy that he's dying. It's, it's crazy. This would never happen like in a tournament that I'm yeah. in or anything like that. I mean, that being said... That was pretty sweet. Yeah, death you by just, fire is like, just a really cool way to die. 12 damage with yeah. two spells. Yeah. Wow, so fire confidence just does six damage to the face, and it's so good with Chandra. Right. So there are some really interesting synergies in his deck that mm -hmm. like you might not expect at first glance, but it's... You know, once he gets a Chandra out, you just have so much mana and cards. So he's playing, I believe, three Chandra for Fiery Confluence. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's great. Yeah. Which means that the burn plan is actually very real then, mm -hmm. if you think about it. Mm -hmm. You know what, now that I think about it, I played against, uh, you know, Nutchkid, right? He's on Painter, very good player. Yeah. He he actually killed me once while we were playing in Swiss of a tournament yeah. by, by going... Fiery Confluence, all right, you're at eight. Fiery Confluence, okay, you're at six. Mm -hmm. um, retain Pride, uh, not Retain Pride, but like Tap Top, and then Sudden Shock. So I got burned for almost 15 points of damage. It was gross. Wow. Yeah. Um, that being said, Eldrazi player is going to go back into his deck, and we're probably going to reconfigure now mm -hmm. that we know exactly, you know, the menace that we're... Uh -huh. And we're on the play, so I think that might make a little bit of difference. And so we saw his deck, his answers to Magus of the Moon, uh, or Jitae and Magic Bomb. And so I think that's why uh, Tesh kept in his Rexian Revokers, so you could shut those cards down. Right. Um, okay, so Nira just making a good point about Chandra. You either immediately cast the, Chandra, the card that you exile off the plus one, uh -huh. or not at all. It's not like you can do sure. it until the end of turn. Does it do any damage? It does, it does. I believe two. Okay, and deal two. Okay. Yeah. You know, so this is one point I'd like to make. There's a lot of people who've been, you know, saying legacy is stale, legacy is solved. Yeah. This is just not true. Like, I agree. You see a deck like this pop up, and it's very powerful, and it can mm -hmm. catch people unawares. And you know, who knows? It might, it might be another like Stompy deck that's probably not as good as Eldrazi against the overall metagame, but. Yeah. It might be playable. And then you see other stuff like Black Green Depths and Black Red Reanimator pop up recently. Right, actually very Food recently. Chain and Allurian as well. Yeah. So there's still plenty of innovation going on uh, in Legacy. So I think that's, you know, people are saying, you know, Modern is a more diverse format. But yeah, that format has its own problems. <laughs> Legacy still has a lot of diversity. Right. And the potential to brew. It's not as easy as it once was, but it's... It's not impossible either. Right. I mean, despite the fact that the cards in Legacy are so, like, efficient, effective, they do what you want them to do, it's, mm -hmm. it's very nice to see, you know, this sort of deck that, you know, just comes out of the gate doing its own thing, and it's actually doing it very well, too. Mm -hmm. He finished 9-0 day one, right? He did. Okay. What do you think of these two hands? Um, looks like the Jodzi player has a turn two thought not, and he's going to go ahead and keep that. Right. And um, Aish looked like he had a Mountain and a Chrome Mox. I don't know if he had any more mana. Ooh, so you have Mountain Chrome Mox. What is that card? Frenzied Fugue. I have no idea what that I've does. I've never heard of this card as well. Let's go for it. Card. Frenzied Fugue. Target player discards three no, cards. No, no, no. That's Fugue. Oh, that's Frenzied Fugue. Okay. fugue. Is it Fugue? Enchant Permanent. Someone help us out. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're so called legacy specialists, but we still have no idea what's going on right now. Okay, it's definitely called Frenzied Fugue. And it's, an, it's a three red enchantment. Let's just look it up on Google or whatever. It's the new act of treason, says Jack. Okay. Frenzied Fugue. I'm, I, I, I like to associate myself with the blue. Oh, one sec. Okay. Enchant permanent. Put it up on, we'll put it up on screen. This is what Frenzied Fugue does. So it's at the beginning of your upkeep, you steal something every turn. So I can see that being really good in this matchup. Okay. Um, until, and you get it until end of turn, and that's pretty oh, good. Oh wow, he didn't play the Chrome Mox, so I think you just take that here. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, I think that might have been a punt um, by Tesh. Right, uh-oh. Yeah, so one of, the, one of the ways that this deck could potentially lose is... Um, if it doesn't have, like, one of the power of Stompy decks is that it's just, you, you come out of the gate so quickly that mm -hmm. your opponent doesn't have time to recover from the first stumble yeah. and, and survive. I also don't like this keep either, uh, because 
you know, even if that didn't happen, you still have two mana and you still need to draw like a soul land to make it good. Mm -hmm. So you got very lucky to draw the man the mountain there, but it's still not quite enough. Ooh, and uh, we see Hidehiro, he's going to draw Oh, we see some JGs match. already on the yeah. screen. <laughs> but I mean, this is going to be too hard to come back from, I think. I think so too. Um, he has a Confluence, which hypothetically, if he draws soul land, does that kill? Nothing, no. It, it, it only does three damage. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think it's it's over already. I think. Yeah. And, and we see he's he's probably upset with himself for keeping the hand, and probably upset with himself for not playing the Chrome Mox out. Right. Yeah. Praying for a miracle. One time thunderous wrath. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's like probably not <laughs> oh, enough. Man. He has an Oblivion Tower now too. <laughs> this is. Uh, a, yeah, that's. What a punishing curve! Oh my god. So one, two, three, four. So at least at least we we get to know that you know without the sower we would have died on the spot. I mean I, I don't I don't know <laughs> I don't know if that's like uh a... <laughs> well with the sower we also die on the spot yeah that was yeah. unfortunate but um... oh now we see the first time I've seen a player upset at losing and I don't think he's upset that he lost I think he's upset that he misplayed the key okay yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I mean he would have had three mana on on the next turn then yeah. Uh, it still wouldn't have been enough. I just think the keep well, was kind of. He would have been able to play the Blood Moon or the Magus of the Moon then, and then the Reality Smasher wouldn't be able to hit. The, okay, the so soaps. it would just be a Thought Knots here, and then you could. Yeah, draw Ta Chandra maybe. Or, or a Frenzy Fugue. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there we go. So we did. We had outs there. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh, the Rabble Master was also going to come next. Wait, Rabble mm -hmm. Master says goblins have to attack though, right? Right. Okay. Um, but either way, he would have had some outs if he played the Chrome Mox. Right. Right. Yeah. That um. Unfortunate, but sweet deck, very very sweet deck. Yeah. I, I I expect to see it on Moto now. I don't think he's out of contention yet, but I, I'm not really sure. Right, right. Um, so that was round fourteen. So I I gotta figure these guys were probably X one, X one possibly or maybe X two. Yeah, so. so he could be out of contention. We'll yeah. find out right. after after the next round. So.